This video is brought to you by the brand new Fractal Design Define R5 computer case. Silence redefined. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to talk about SSDs and how to benchmark them, and I'll also be featuring this Samsung 850 EVO 250GB SSD because it's new and fast. This tutorial is intended for beginners though, so apart from assuming that you have a basic working knowledge of computers and what a computer is, I will start with some SSD terminology basics, just so you know what the heck I'm talking about for the rest of the video. So an SSD is a solid state drive. It stores your precious bits of data onto what is known as NAND flash modules, which have no moving parts and can be very, very fast. This is the same basic storage technology that is in a USB thumb drive, for example, or the built-in storage on your smartphone. But NAND alone does not an SSD make. It needs to be incorporated with some other elements before it can be wedged into your desktop or laptop PC. The form factor is important. That's the physical size and shape of the drive, and for SSDs right now, that's most commonly the 2.5 inch form factor that has been in use for some time, just like the 850 EVO here. Other SSDs use the MSATA or PCIe form factor, which you may have also seen. M.2 is the new form factor. This is formerly known as NGFF. Physical compatibility here is determined by uh, a width, which is the width that way, as well as the length, which is the length that way. This Plexstor M6E, for example, is an M.2 2280 drive, which means it's 22 millimeters wide and 80 millimeters long. I have another video that's all about M.2 since it's uh, still pretty new, so feel free to check that out if you want more information on M.2 specifically. So you'll need to check the form factor to make sure that the drive you're looking at will fit into your system or your laptop, but you also want to check the connector. 2.5 inch drives still use the standard SATA connector, which is very common, and the M.2 connector is determined by the drive's width, which is 22 millimeters for the one I just showed you, as well as the keying, again more on that in my M.2 video. The protocol refers to the communication standard between the drive and the rest of your system. Again, SATA is the standard here, although PCI Express drives are becoming more popular every day. The protocol will determine how much bandwidth is available for the drive to use to communicate. So the SATA Revision 3 protocol that's prevalent right now has 6 gigabits per second of available bandwidth between the drive and your system. Also keep in mind here that when we talk about theoretical bandwidth, such as what is available via SATA Rev 3, we use a raw bit rate to refer to what's possible, 6 gigabits per second. But when we refer to the actual benchmarks that we're measuring, measurable data throughput, we'll refer to it using bytes. So you'll see 500 megabytes per second, for example. Eight bits make a byte just in case you didn't know. There are also a few internal elements to the drive to point out. The connector will route over to the drive's controller, which as the name implies, controls the data being written to or read from the NAND. And it also handles stuff like garbage collection and wear leveling that I'm not going to delve into today. Some drives will also add a DDR memory chip next to the controller for caching purposes. Uh, but for caching, this 850 EVO actually uses part of its own built-in NAND, but it sets it into SLC mode. So that brings us back to the NAND, which is where the bits of data are actually stored. And the NAND is what makes this 850 EVO so special. First of all, Samsung has developed a way to stack layers and layers of NAND flash on top of each other. So even though the chips inside this drive look quite flat, they're actually 3D inside. 3D vertical NAND like this is very new, but it also represents a big leap forward for solid state storage. Samsung introduced 3D VNAND with the 850 Pro, which stored two bits of data in each available cell within the NAND flash. That's also known as MLC or multi-level cell NAND, as opposed to the much faster but also very expensive SLC or single level cell NAND. That's mostly used in enterprise and server environments and military applications, that sort of thing. The 850 EVO has TLC or triple level cell NAND, meaning it stores three bits of data in each cell which also makes it more cost effective to produce. So altogether, that's triple level cell, three dimensional vertical NAND technology, and you can use it to store your cat pictures. To sum up the terminology section of this video though, I would say that the form factor and connector determine the physical compatibility of the drive, the protocol determines how much available bandwidth the drive has, and then the speed of both the controller and the NAND flash itself is what determine how fast the SSD can actually perform. 
So now that you know how to talk about an SSD, let's say you want to benchmark your brand new SSD to see if it actually hits those impressive numbers advertised on the retail box. I'm gonna focus on the typical SATA experience with my 850 EVO now, but most of this will also apply to M.2 or PCIe drives as well. Benchmarking preparation will involve plugging the drive into your computer and booting up. Remember that your motherboard also has a controller and you'll need to set that controller to the right mode. You'll get the best performance by connecting to the native controller on your motherboard, which for my uh, system back here is part of the X99 chipset. You also might have a Z97 chipset or a 990FX chipset, for example, on the AMD side that can also control your SATA ports. So make sure you're connecting to a SATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second port. Check your motherboard manual if you need to, or else you might bottleneck your new SSD. Boot into the UEFI BIOS section of your motherboard's UEFI BIOS and find your SATA controller's settings. Make sure it's using AHCI mode or RAID mode will also work here, but honestly, there's no need to go into RAID mode if you're not also setting up a RAID array. Just stick with AHCI. Just don't use IDE. Also keep in mind here that if your operating system is on another drive connected to that same controller and you switch it, you might not be able to boot into Windows after changing the controller mode. Uh, but Google IDE to AHCI and there's easy tutorials for how to do a quick registry fix to get around that problem. Also, remember that if your operating system is installed and running off of the SSD, you can still go ahead and benchmark that SSD, but you're not gonna get quite the same performance since the drive will have other things on its mind, like keeping your operating system up and running. After you boot it up though, you'll want to initialize and format the new drive in Windows Disk Management Utility, and then it should pop up as a new, fresh and clean drive, ready to go. So what we're gonna to do today with our benchmarking is we're gonna look at the four corners of SSD performance. Those are sequential read, sequential write, random read, and random write. So sequential read and write tests show how the drive handles large files. So video is always a good example. These will require as much data throughput as possible. They wanna write it as fast as they can or read it as fast as they can. Usually these uh, test results are listed in megabytes per second. And the fastest SATA drives right now that are able to fully saturate the available six gigabits per second of bandwidth on the SATA Rev3 bus can hit maybe 500 to 550 megabytes per second. Random reads and writes show how the drive handles many small operations at the same time. This will usually be listed as IOPS in the test results or input output operations per second. Now the drives are way, way too fast for you or I to manually be able to give it enough work to do to actually achieve its maximum IOPS, but the synthetic tests that we're gonna to show today queue up as many commands as they can to stress the drive. That's why you'll usually see Q depth 32 for the random read and write tests. One last metric is response time, but since SSDs move at the speed of electricity, these values are usually incredibly low and uh, they're rarely compared between drives, at least in my experience. I only bring this up because response time for SSDs is such a huge leap from older mechanical hard drives, and this is what makes an SSD-based system just feel so fast, and that's all thanks to the drive being so responsive. Now I chose these three SSD benchmarking tests because they're free, they're pretty easy to use, and they give a good idea of your drive's performance. So let's start with Atto. This drive benchmark has been around for quite some time. It's always a go-to for manufacturers themselves who are looking to show a drive's peak performance. So after you install it, just choose your SSD, hit start. It's gonna run a series of tests using different file sizes. I usually run the default settings, but then I'll try QDepth 4 as well as QDepth 10, which will give the drive a little bit more to work with. Just remember that these results are in kilobytes, so divide that number on the right column by a thousand and that will give you megabytes per second. So, nice and easy. Next we have AS SSD from Alex Intelligence Software. Also quite simple to run and I like that it will tell you if it approves of your storage configuration or not via the green text on the upper left in the window. If this text is red, then it means that AS SSD thinks you should change something about your configuration. This test will give you sequential read and write speeds, 4K tests, which are actually honestly the closest thing to real world performance from any of these synthetics, 64 thread tests, which queue up as many commands as it can to achieve maximum input output operations per second, and response time, which I usually just look at and think to myself, man, that's fast. Uh, so switch the view to IOPS if you want to see IOPS after the test is over, of course. And also note that there are a few more built-in tests within AS SSD that try to mimic real-world PC activities, so you can try those out if you want to compare them to other drives. There's a compression benchmark too, which I really only find useful for drives that use on-the-fly compression methods, which at this point is mostly Sandforce controlled drives from the past four years or so. 
Our third benchmark is Crystal Disk Mark. It's also very easy to use and it's free. Here I usually go with a one gigabyte file size and I just run all the tests with three passes. Sequential reads and writes are here again, a 512K test and a 4K test that use smaller file sizes. And of course the ever important 4K Q-Depth 32 test for maximum IOPS. After the tests run, go to edit and hit copy, then paste your results into Notepad or some other editing software, and you can see your IOPS, and you can also see a few more details about your benchmarking run. So if you're watching my benchmark test results, you might have spotted a few things uh, specifically about the Samsung 850 EVO. My Addo tests hit about 550 megabytes per second reads and 525 megabytes per second writes. I had an amazing 96,000 IOPS read score in ASSSD, and Crystal Disk Mark showed about 75K IOPS write and 80K IOPS read. On the one hand, these are very impressive numbers, but on the other hand, they're not standing out too much further ahead of any of the other high-end SSDs in the past year or two, say. This is because the SATA Revision 3 protocol is limited to six gigabits per second of bandwidth, and in the real world, no drive can really achieve much past about maybe 550 megabytes per second in any test while connected via SATA Rev 3. It is a bottleneck. PCIe drives like the newer M.2 offerings can up the bandwidth to 10 or 20 gigabits per second, so I am excited to see what Samsung is able to do with this new technology using that newer protocol. If you're an SSD veteran, you probably noticed that I skipped a few things in this video. There are definitely other metrics to benchmark SSDs by, and the four corners tests that I've run today do focus a lot more on achieving the maximum performance possible to see what a drive can do rather than actually looking at real-world benefits. Also, Iometer is another benchmarking tool that I really can't go without at least mentioning. It's widely used in the industry, but it is a bit more complicated to set up and run, so let me know if you guys would be interested in another video dedicated specifically to that software, because it's pretty dense. I would also like to say that uh, using blended tests that mix reads, writes, uh, sequential and non-sequential activity can give you a better idea of how the drive can handle a mixed workload. Let's face it, if you have this drive installed in most situations, you're not going to be just dealing with all sequential reads or all sequential writes. Write consistency is another metric that I find very important, but that also is a more complex topic. So I'm gonna link an article in this video's description about write consistency, along with some of the links to the benchmarking tools that I use, so you guys can download those and try them out, uh, as well as some suggested further reading links to sites that I often peruse for SSD info. Les Tokar and the crew at SSD Review do a fantastic job, as does Alan Malventano and the folks over at PC Perspective, and of course the infamous Christian Vato from Anand Tech, seen here riding the bumper cars in South Korea. That is all for this video though, but let me know what SSD or SSDs you are currently running in the comments section down below this video. Don't forget to hit the like button because it makes the world a better place. Subscribe to my channel for more tech videos. Check out my store at paulshardware.net for shirts like this one, and we'll see you all next time.